Hello friends, how are we doing today? I have a lot of interesting information to share with you today. It's going to be about the mark of the beast. So this wasn't what I initially <laughs> planned on talking about today on my prophecy portion on Fridays because Tuesdays, as you know, I'm doing the series on the book of Romans. So don't forget next Tuesday, I'm in chapter three, very excited. So make sure to catch that video but the prophecy videos on Fridays will be depending on what the situation brings the week at hand because prophetically speaking we know how things change and a lot of it is related to what's happening in the news because obviously world events are showing us where we are in the timeline of things so because there's a certain piece of news that is just breaking out now I need to share it with you so I touched on it last Friday if you were listening before I say anything further please remember to check out this playlist I have this playlist I have a lot of playlists friends I've accumulated tons of them but this one in particular is about the mark of the beast I've got several videos in here because what I'm about to share with you today I slightly touched on it in one of these videos so how many have I got I think I've got three one two three four five five okay <laughs> I got five videos and it's about time I updated you on developments now after you've watched some of those videos on that playlist you will know why I'm talking about currency now in the Islamic world there's this new development about the Islamic coin and crypto and how that's going to dramatically affect the lives of Muslims worldwide in terms of finances so very interesting update because I believe friends that the mark of the beast and we're going to go through all of the scriptures all of them in the book of Revelation that talk to us about this thing the mark of the beast and I believe it is going to be connected to currency as well as the Islamic creed, the Shahada, the confession of faith. By accepting the mark, you give allegiance to Allah, Muhammad, the cause of Islam. You submit to Mecca, Gaba. We shall see what happens about that place in the future because I believe there's going to be conflict in that region between a king from the north against the king of the south I have talked about that also but what ties this all together these United Nations that come together the Islamic nations what is key is currency they need to pull away from dependency on the US dollar but they need to also formulate their own system of banking so they may trade so that they may buy and sell <clears throat> what is Islamic coin and what is it used for so I'm going to go through a couple of links here all these other news articles I was spending a lot of time on this morning are irrelevant right now I was talking about Turkey Cyprus Armenia Azerbaijan Russia Ukraine situation with the grain deal and anyway the situation in Israel because uh, let me just see what's going on now is it updated okay there's a lot of conflict in Israel as we know it's a very troubled government we won't surrender coalition far right heads reject IAF protest as akin to coup bid oh my goodness there's a lot of shaking going on friends the Lord is shaking nations and with Israel is key that we keep an eye on what's happening this instability only favors the enemies of Israel naturally they look for loopholes cracks in the armor very difficult days ahead for Israel pray for them as well as the church remember the persecuted church anyway let me get on with this what is the Islamic coin and what is it used for I did talk about this and I did share with you a video which I'm going to share with you today as a recap because so many of you are new subscribers you haven't watched those videos that I've done and you're a little unfamiliar with what I talk about so I'll go I'll share that video 
Islamic coin is a Sharia compliant. This is Sharia based, Islamic based, fundamentally Islamic banking. So, completely unique in this world. There's not a single currency in this world today, friends, that is governed by a religious jurisdiction. None. This is totally different. Again, let me reiterate the fourth beast of Daniel that talks about the fourth beast being the dreadful and the terrible one in chapters 2, chapter 7, chapter 8 is the fourth beast friends that is the one to watch for and I believe the reason why is different than the other previous ones is because this religion encompasses a system militarily economic everything spirituality language culture food you name it it covers it so this currency is entirely sharia compliant according to what they're telling us the people who have created this are telling us is sharia compliant digital currency is set to be released this quickly I mean they've been working at it for a while but this soon hmm is very interesting how it will take off I believe a lot of Muslims are gonna sign up and start buying and investing and trading and buying and selling friends it's not only for Muslims it's open to everyone anyone who's interested in investment it are able to purchase the creators of the coin have the goal of revolutionizing Islamic finance before I move on there is something I want to say you know this situation I've talked about this before I'm on RT's news site I want to hear it from the horse's mouth they have refused to renew the grain deal it expired it was for six months and because the west the eu nato what have you ukraine have not kept to their end of the bargain putin has said well fine i'm not going to continue with it and rightly so you can look into that for your further reading i believe and i did say this at the time when i did videos on the when it first broke out the russia ukraine conflict and on other videos that I believe there is something in this situation friends the grain deal that is preparing way for the mark of the beast I hope I made that clear so I am on record for saying that the, this situation is creating a way for the mark of the beast at the moment Russia is in control somewhat in a difficult position albeit Erdogan is a key player the key mediator key negotiator between the West and Turkey and be between the West Russia and Ukraine key player and like I said very opportunist opportunistic and strategic is Erdogan that he's going to find a way of getting Putin back to the table, finding a way where they can reinstate the Green Deal. Because Russia and Ukraine, friends, are major global grain exporters. So who's going to control it? <coughs> this guy here. Keep your eyes on this developments. Going back to the article. So... The dig digital Sharia compliant currency is going to be released this year in September in a couple of months. The creators of the coin have the goal of revolutionizing Islamic finance. In this article, it will explain what that means and what the cryptocurrency will be used for. Again, if you're interested in reading all of these articles, I will put them in the link. Just let me know in the comment section or in the live chat. Right. We will also look at the potential of its reach. If it appeals to the estimated 2 billion Muslims in the world, 
sheer numbers may tip this cryptocurrency into a leading proposition but will it be accepted by those who it is built to appeal to well the consensus at the moment is it's a great idea it's one way to move away from dependency on the US dollar it's another option for Muslims to trade in crypto and abiding by the Islamic duties so they got their obligations all covered as of July Islamic coin has raised 400 million US dollars in funding while this mammoth investment does not guarantee success it does put it into the category of a cryptocurrency worth watching and I can tell you crypto land at the moment is watching this very closely there's lots of videos on it on online but again we shall see what happens it might be a case of trial and error but I doubt it because they spent a lot of time trying to get to this stage and now they make their announcement according to coin market cap there are around 22 almost 23,000 cryptocurrencies in the world however many of these are dead or forgotten about just over 8,000 cryptocurrencies are active as a new crypto Islamic coin is late to the game and needs a unique selling point and it seems to have one think about the Muslims for a start <laughs> the thing is with the Islamic world in so many ways they have this thing called unity to further the agenda of Islam they have a unity a sense of I don't know brotherhood right that's another thing I need to talk about oh my goodness I've got to take a side note the Muslim Brotherhood another video friends another video okay another video for later okay the stuff I need to share with you is going to keep me busy all year and I'm busy enough as it is praise the Lord for his grace is sufficient so they've got the market they've got the unique selling point Islamic coin was developed to cater specifically to the values of practicing Muslims this is potentially a huge market estimated to be anything from 1.2 billion to 2 billion worldwide the coin is a digital currency that adheres to the principles of Sharia law. This makes it the first Sharia compliant cryptocurrency. And for that reason alone, majority of Muslims worldwide, religious or not religious, will buy into it. Religious or not religious. You love the tiny pockets of people, groups movements little movers and shakers within islamic community that will oppose it saying oh i don't think it's a good idea but it's going to be a little trickle in the vast ocean that is the islamic world it is set to go and sell on the 1st of september and the company issuing it the huck blockchain will use the 400 million us dollars in funding to launch just to launch it alone so this currency is sharia compliant meaning sticking to the principles of islamic law islamic principles prohibit the charging or payment of interest rather it promotes profit sharing or risk sharing arrangements you know this creates a massive loophole for money laundering engaging in uncertain transactions is not allowed contracts should have clear terms blah 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 blah, blah whatever Sharia compliant finance is an alternative financial system alternative that upholds Islamic values while providing a range of financial services it is these principles that Islamic coin hopes to ride upon when it, sell, it sells its cryptocurrency this makes sense in theory but what about in practice recent studies suggest people are loosening their ties to Islam in some parts of the Middle East especially in countries such as Iran and especially if they are young so is being Sharia compliant going to be enough to make this coin popular? Islamic coin was recently giving a fatwa because of revolution movements around the world. I still doubt that's going to have a, a, a huge significant impact. But think about the mark of the beast and the ten nations, the ten kings, the ten horns, the ten toes, when they come together to give their allegiance, their power and their authority to the one man the beast for one hour they reign together 
encompassing this unity is the mark of the beast because the false prophet will go to these scriptures bear with me is the one who enforces the mark and if it's connected to buying and selling and trade this system is a religious economic military system islam ticks all three boxes if you challenge that give me your reasons in the comment section a fatwa is an opinion from Islamic authority that says it follows Sharia principles. I don't want to read so much. I've got other things I want to share. Islamic coin hopes to convince practicing Muslims that by using the crypto, it can financially empower the Muslim community. We've got our own crypto. We have our own currency. While upholding the values, values of Islam through blockchain technology and innovation. Big names are backing it. Charitable donations. Farid says that another positive attribute to this coin is that whenever this coin is minted, 10% of the value is stored and will be used for charity and for the benefit of the Muslim community. Um, excuse me. This sounds all good and very noteworthy, but I doubt that 10% is gonna go toward charity. A lot of money, friends, that goes to Islamic charities end up in the hands of those who sell arms and weaponry equipment to resistant fighters. Terrorism. This is well documented, it's, it's, it's like, it's blatantly proven it's out there this is why i said this is a loophole for money laundering and who's actually going to vet and regulate this muslim islamic principles so it creates a lot of loopholes for those who have sinister ambitions not good but it particularly likes its potential. If only 3-4% to 4 Muslims who trade in cryptocurrencies join the network of Islamic coin, then this coin can reach the potential of Bitcoin and become very popular. So they're only saying that just 3-4% to 4 of Muslims who trade can reach the potential of Bitcoin and become very popular. If this happens, its value will reach $1 trillion. So... 100 billion will be used for community work and charity. Good reason for them to fix their own problems. Poverty, infrastructure, <clears throat> violence, malnutrition, education. We shall see where this money goes. He says he thinks the Muslim community should go into crypto and especially Islamic coin. We should keep on doing research about it so we don't get behind the rest of the world. We Muslims should understand the crypto world and take advantage advantage of it for our community. However, not all Muslims agree with its principles and not all Muslim authorities agree with the fatwa. These sentiments could affect its uptake because the fatwa has put a seal of approval on it but not all Muslims agree to that seal. Will Islamic coin assert Bitcoin as the biggest crypto or will anonymity be the end result just like a bucket ton of other crypto hopefuls? We shall see. A lot of naysayers would say, yeah, it's just going to end up in no nothing spectacular. I doubt it with that much money invested and, and, and a lot of Islamic jurisprudence backing it. I doubt it. They're going to make it happen. I could be entirely wrong. We should see. Revealed. Not long ago, the 3rd of July. Islamic coin to drive major Sharia compliant NFT expansion. The move comes close to the heels of the Islamic coin announcing September the 1st for launch of its token on crypto exchanges and the new 200 million fundraising. Right. I spoke on this briefly in my last video last Friday. I was looking at the organization of Turkic states that I've spoken about a lot in my previous messages. 
and looking at the economic outlook. <clears throat> Organization of Turkic states are these Turkic people nations, T Turkic peoples who are unifying their resources, their know-how, all the logistical assets and what have you, even unifying a form of one language for the sake of convenience are also working toward having their own international monetary fund like the IMF but they're having their own version I still go back to this organization because it's worth keeping an eye on although it's a specific Turkic people's club only I believe the Gog and Magog alliances is majority Turkic peoples with Persia, Iran, Sudan, Libya joining in. So it's not a, a clear cut confederation of one massive United Islamic States. There will be 10 leaders amongst these people groups because remember in the book of Daniel, the Nebuchadnezzar's vision, when it comes down to the statue of the ten toes, it's a divided kingdom. It's partly strong, the iron, and it's partly fragile, the clay. That's the interpretation that the angel gave to Daniel. It's got nothing to do with hybrid fallen beings. No, let's just stick with the interpretation that the angel himself gives to Daniel. It's going to be a divided kingdom. There'll be some strength, but it won't be entirely cohesive. Right, a couple of days ago, Huck becomes Istanbul Blockchain Week's title sponsor promoting Islamic culture in Web3. So they have this event, and this um, sponsor. Well, let's read it. Istanbul Blockchain Week gets a seal of approval from Huck Islamic Coin, the official. An ethics first network committed to empowering individuals and fostering sustainable decentralized finance. As a title sponsor, Huck will bring to the forefront ESG forward and Sharia compliant advancements within Web3, celebrating a culture. I don't pretend to understand what on earth the Web3 is. If you do, let me know in the comments. Celebrating a culture of inclusivity, social responsibility. Istanbul in Turkey becomes epicenter of the convergence of technology, finance and Islamic values. Well, fancy that. Oh my goodness gracious. What, why do I say that? Well, it's like when you read it, it makes it more real, you know. When I talk and I project certain things that are likely to happen in the future, with the word of God, Bible prophecy be my foundation it's it's like wow when you see things happen falling into place you begin to see the picture of how it will practically come to pass because the word of god is very practical friends as well as it being a wonderful spiritual book it's historically accurate and it's very up to date wow so Let's read a bit more. Istanbul Blockchain Week, the highly anticipated global event that attracts industry leaders, politicians, entrepreneurs, developers, is excited to unveil its collaboration with the Islamic coin, dedicated to creating a fair and ethical decentralized financial system. Huck will serve as the title sponsor for this year's event. Crypto has made its mark in Turkey and Istanbul has emerged as the go-to destination for the country's Web3 enthusiasts. Many small businesses in the region are actively involved in cash to crypto transactions and crypto has become a practical solution to counter the effects of inflation, which is what they need in Turkey. Countering the effects of inflation because the economy, it keeps getting a bad beating. They have a little spikes and a little sign of hope, but then it gets another thrashing. By assuming the title sponsorship, Huck stands as a testament to the harmonious coexistence of crypto trading and investments, Web3 engagement and the guardian principles of Sharia. Oh, hunky dory. This Istanbul Blockchain Week 
is becoming or becomes a cultural melting pot where Europe meets the Middle East because Turkey is very strategically located on, on the world map right at the bridge of east and west hotspot for trade very very advantage very much an advantage for Turkey therefore emerging as a symbol of ethical crypto investing and practices right interesting I will put these in the description. I'm going to show you that video now. It's only three and a half minutes. I shared it before, some months ago. I'll share it now. This is the official Islamic Coin website. You can go on there. Islamiccoin.net. And this is their own promotional video talking about it. So let me play this. I'll turn my mic around so you can catch what's being said here. Ready? All right, let's go. Islam is the oh, start again. I interrupted it because of the volume. Islam is the world's second largest religion with almost two billion followers, a quarter of the world's population. Muslims make up a majority of the population in 47 countries. Islam teaches that God is merciful, all powerful, and unique. Islamic law, or Sharia law, is a religious law forming part of the Islamic tradition. It guides many of the aspects of the followers of Islam's lives, including financial interactions. One of the core principles of Islamic financial law is the prohibition of paying or charging interest. However, if we look closely at modern legal tender, or fiat money, we will notice that they are being issued by central banks and lent out to commercial banks with interest at a rate determined by the central banks themselves. Fiduciary money is designed to be easily manipulated by central banks and governments by the means of controlling supply via control of the interest rate. So, by design, today's fiduciary money is not fully compliant with Sharia. However, new technologies such as the blockchain enable new value exchange systems that are decentralized, fair, and immutable. We proudly present to the world Islamic Coin. Islamic Coin is the halal crypto asset designed to create value for the Muslim community worldwide. It is built on the dedicated Islamic blockchain called Hakchain and carefully follows the Islamic view on finance. Islamic coin cannot be arbitrarily printed and thus devalued. It also can't be arbitrarily deflated through a rise of the central bank's interest rate. Its price is determined solely by the market and thus always fair. Islamic coin may only be minted or issued by those who contribute work and investment as validators of the network at a predetermined announced rate. Unlike fiduciary money, Islamic coin is not operated by the banks whose main business is to earn money by charging interest. Charging interest is what leads to riba and is therefore forbidden. Each time a new Islamic coin is minted, 10% of the issued amount is deposited into a special evergreen fund for further investment into Islamic internet projects or given to Islamic charities. This is the first introduction of a coin bringing direct economic value to a community. The Evergreen Fund is a non-profit foundation focused on long-term sustainability and community impact. It effectively works as a crypto endowment. Key decisions are made by the consensus of validators on the Hawk blockchain. Our mission is to empower the international community of the followers of Islam with a financial and technological tool that allows for independent financial interaction while supporting technological evolution and philanthropy. With an estimated 25 million users, Bitcoin's market cap is just 10% shy of 1 trillion. Leveraging the power of community, Islamic coin may surpass Bitcoin as the world's dominating crypto asset by engaging just a fraction of the online Muslim community. Islamic coin potential is far greater than those of existing crypto assets because of the power of community. So 
they have that to their advantage, yes. This is a video. Let me turn my mic around. So the power of community is what will drive this and make it successful, should it be successful. This was announced three weeks ago. Islamic coin, one of their main peoples. Let me play this. Two minutes. Dear friends and team partners, after securing a record-breaking $400 million in funding from throughout the world, we are incredibly excited and proud to announce a groundbreaking development that carries profound implications for the world of finance and the global Muslim community. Today, we embark on a journey that marries the principles of Islamic finance with the transformative power of cryptocurrency reflecting the progress we can achieve when we honor our traditions while embracing the future. Staying true to our mission, empowering the world's Muslim community and beyond with a financial instrument for the digital age, it is my pleasure to announce that the Islamic coin will start launching on top cryptocurrency exchanges from 1st of September. Our public launch and listing countdown has started. Even before launch, we have already received international recognition. We have recently signed a partnership with DBCAP Group, opening the doors to collaborations with over 350 banks offering products to Muslim audience. We are incredibly proud to announce our partnership with Fambras, one of the largest halal certification agencies in the world. We have formed a world-class team coming from Wall Street, the city of London, Dubai International Financial Center and a diverse cross-culture environment to continue reaching new heights. The future holds tremendous promise as we connect Sharia compliant finance to global trade, partner with world-leading companies to establish game-changing partnerships. Myself, the advisory and executive boards, along with my fellow co-founders, invite you to embrace the opportunity presented by Islamic Coin. Friends, this Islamic coin, my goodness, did I have another video up here? I'll come to that in a moment. This Islamic coin, friends, I believe the mark of the beast has to be connected to currency because I'm just repeating myself. <laughs> because the currency or the beast system requires people to buy or sell, right? They have to accept the mark in order to buy or sell. We know the false prophet is the one who initiates and enforces it, which also points us to a government type of organization that has its own form or system of financial um, system that is able to control the flow of goods and services. Would this include some sort of electronic device, a chip or something? It's possible. It's definitely possible, but the main criteria, friends, for accepting the mark is the allegiance. You give your allegiance to the beast. I was reading this article, and look, check this out. Last month, two months ago, where are the global Islamic financial hubs? You might be asking yourself, well, I know, I don't hear about this. Like, what's the big deal? Where are those regions, locations in the world that are actually pioneering this? Well, you'd be surprised to know. Great Britain is one of the major regions. Oh, what is this? Let me scroll down. So we've got Dubai, obviously, Arabian Peninsula. Dubai is considered by some to be the most important hub in the global Islamic finance industry. The Emirates strategic location connecting Africa, Europe and Asia. This system, friends, think about the mark of the beast. It's the beast system, which is different to the harlot, the Babylon the Great in the south, which I believe is in Arabia. It will include those who all want to have a slice of the pie, investment. When these leaders come together, like when we read news, we hear about Iran and Saudi Arabia 
negotiating, coming to some sort of peace deal. It does not surprise me. In order for there to be a turnaround of events, remember the harlot rides the beast, but the beast devours her. They're together, but then the beast that she creates will devour and destroy her, burn her with fire. So there is an element of treachery, a big element of it, I would say. Although it's been pioneered by the Arabs in the south, all the other nations, Islamic nations, I just read to you an article regarding Turkey, are going to be on board with this. Does this all make sense? Am I just talking and wasting my breath? Is anything that I'm saying to you making sense? Are you tracking with me, my darling friends? Okay. <clears throat> so Dubai, the most important hub, right? The Emirates strategic location connecting Africa, Europe and Asia. Its strong Islamic finance framework and its reputation for innovation have enabled it to attract investors, institutions from both Muslim and non-Muslim countries. So that gives us an indication that this won't just gain interest from the Muslim community, but non-Muslims alike, because they're stupid. Anything to do with money, oh my goodness. Ugh. <clears throat> no wisdom. But the people of God ought to know what's coming, that this is a system that is coming and not to partake of it have nothing to do with the beast, nor its mark. So, Dubai International Finance Centre, financial free zone established 2004, wow, has been a key factor behind the Emirates' leading role within the global Islamic finance industry. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so we got that, we understand Dubai, UAE. Malaysia, which is also another country that really likes to bring awareness to Islamophobia in the world. Works very closely, or did, with Pakistan and then Imran Khan, the Prime Minister, in order to get this <clears throat> recognised at the United Nations. Malaysia. And they have a community in Malaysia that use Sharia-based finances for their daily life. So it was brain no-brainer that Malaysia would be on board Kuala Lumpur has a sophisticated Islamic finance ecosystem in terms of market infrastructure regulation human capital and product innovation it's a beautiful city if you look at it online very beautiful Islamic finance is a key area mentioned in Malaysia's 12th economic plan for 2021 to 2025. Key, Islamic finance. So back in those other videos of mine, talking about this playlist, I spoke about this stuff then. That it would be interesting to see where things develop, but I think it's one to watch for sure. And here we are. It particularly focuses on the areas of regulation supervision of Islamic finance institutions. The Central Bank's Financial Sector Blueprint 2022 to 2026, a five year plan for the country's financial sector, mentions advancing value based finance through Islamic finance leadership. In Malaysia, 650 billion US dollars in Islamic banking assets, making it the third largest country globally after Iran in first and Saudi Arabia in second. Wow, don't underestimate Malaysia. The country hosts 38 banks that are either fully Islamic or have windows offering Islamic financial products. Again, another sign that the future is is seemingly going to be thriving in the east and dwindling in the west it gives more reason for those in the west to jump on and get a part of this pie makes sense let me move down london look at this just clearing my throat london you go is a leading hub 
the leading hub. They have a lot invested in Saudi Arabia, friends. A lot invested in the Arabs in the south. A lot invested in Islam. Is the leading hub for Islamic finance in Europe and the Western world because of its historical ties with key Islamic finance markets such as the UAE. A strong regulatory environment and large liquid stock exchange as well as specialised law, investment, advisory services and Sharia compliant transactions. Huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. For example, Clifford Chance one of the largest law firms in the world is headquartered in London and advised the UK government on its most recent sovereign sukuk, Islamic halal wording, in 2021. Similarly, Schroders, a UK headquartered asset manager which manages around $738 billion in assets, has a dedicated Islamic equity fund. There are four British Islamic banks, Bank of London and Middle East, Gatehouse Bank, Al Ryan Bank and Qatar Islamic Bank UK. UK based Islamic banks assets accounted for some $7.5 billion in 2021, representing about 0.3% of global Islamic banking assets. Wow. However, the UK makes up around 85% of European Islamic banking assets, including excluding Turkey, rather. I should leave these links in the description because they're very interesting details. The London Stock Exchange is a popular destination for international Sukuk listings, having attracted $50 billion through 68 Sukuk issuances as of May, as of May 2023, with the likes of the Islamic Development Bank among the companies who have used the exchange for such services. The UK is also an important player in the Islamic Asset Management Universe with 37 active Sharia compliant funds managing around 19.5 billion US dollars in assets in 2021. The UK Export Finance The UK Export Finance, the country's export credit agency, has been involved in Sukuk and other Islamic finance transactions. Wow. Bahama, Manama rather, Bahama. I got the B and the Manama mixed up. Bahrain. All right. Obviously, Bahrain. And Saudi Arabia. Other important Islamic finance hubs. Other notable merging finance hubs include Doha in Qatar, Jakarta, Indonesia, Istanbul in Turkey, and Islamabad in Pakistan. This is absolutely absurd. Pakistan. Will Pakistan take advantage of this? It needs it, doesn't it? Financially, economically, it's a disaster zone. It's in debt. It's almost bankrupt. Now, let's get to the word, friends. Having said all that, what does the word of God say about the mark? We're going to go through four chapters. One, two, three, four, five chapters in the book of Revelation. Let us read chapter 13. So we understand <clears throat> that this is a key feature of the beast, its coalition, and what it will use in order to further its destructive power which will be the mark of the beast in fact it's the mark of the beast that causes those to give allegiance to it verse one then i stood on the sand of the sea and i saw a beast rising up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns and on his heads a blasphemous name the blasphemy is islam because i have this view that makes sense everything about islamic the islamic system is blasphemous whatever we you and i consider sacred and holy they consider blasphemous and vice versa 
<clears throat> now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. We have, and I've spoken about this so many times, but recently I haven't touched on it, but please do check my older videos. The Greek, Medo-Persian, and the Babylonian empires. It's going to look like that, meaning the regions of those former empires will form a confederation. They will come together. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. I believe the deadly wound is being healed, and it's Turkish. Turkish and Assyrian. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast and they worshipped the beast saying who is like the beast who is able to make war with him. You see currency and the financial aspect makes an organisation legitimate. It gives it the boost the credibility it needs in order to do business with the world. This is why these organisations the economic corporation organization another outfit of 10 nations 10 islamic nations is in existence today it's about economic corporation of course so they're working together pakistan is in there afghanistan is in the organization turkey is in it iran is in the organization and we also have the turkic the organization of turkic states formerly called the turkic council is also another organization that is working together with their own people groups the turkey people groups but you see it's the currency friends that's the linchpin keep your eye out for currency any talk about finances that are going to unify the peoples in order to trade to do commerce buying and selling finance is a key factor and i don't know why so many prophecy land disregard it or minimize it he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies he was given authority to continue for 42 months short-lived authority but a devastating authority the beast will have then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven <clears throat> he'll be against the Saints against Israel against the holy place in Jerusalem because this entity wants to usurp, take over and replace. That is the nature of the beast. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Oh Lord, help us with the days ahead. Your people are just not prepared. We're not ready. But those in the Middle East, they're ready. They're ready to die for the name of Jesus. To lay down their lives for his namesake. It was granted him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over tribes, tongues, and nations. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Let us be written in your book, dear Lamb of God. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity should go into captivity, just like Isis killing by the sword and taking captive slaves he who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword here's the patience and the faith of the saints this is what we are called to friends this is it we are called to be patient endure to the end and be faithful if we can just do that we'll be okay i saw another beast coming out of the earth now here comes your false prophet, the guy who is instrumental in enforcing the mark. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and causes the earth, they're together in his presence. One is not coming after the other ones died, they are together which is why the similarities between the Islamic end times perspective against the Bibles is it all lines up, friends.
and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast because the Islamic end times talk about the Mahdi and Isa being together, present. <clears throat> Isa comes after the Mahdi. The Mahdi is the first guy to show up that does a, a military assault in Arabia, in Mecca. Have you heard about that? Isa shows up. I think he's somewhere in Syria. The prophetic mantle type person Isa, the Islamic Jesus shows up and it's him who fights against the Dajjal which is the person whom they hate and fear the most Dajjal and he deceives those who dwells on the earth by the signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast I believe the signs are possibly miraculous signs because think about it if this is supposed to be the false prophet the false Jesus Jesus in his ministry on the earth did miracles he did signs and wonders so the imitation will do likewise counterfeit signs in order to convince the people he would deceive those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast they work together telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived the image of the beast hmm he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast I've done a video I'm the first person that talked about this I know there's been another person that since talked about it I think Nelson Waters touched on it after I talked about it so I was the first person to talk about this I believe the giving breath to the image of the beast potentially could be connected to the black stone in Mecca in Gaba I've done videos on it please check out my videos the black stone in Gaba and the image of the beast because it ties into Islamic prophecies too who also believe the black stone in Gaba will be given breath and not only that it will be given eyes to see and a mouth to talk in the last days it could be that they take the black stone and move it to its new home and the new home potentially could be in Jerusalem when they take half of the city the Muslim armies it all makes sense all very probable all very possible but I could be wrong so far we are on track praise the Lord <clears throat> So he gets power, he gives allegiance. He says, let's make an image. And then he goes one step further. He gives breath to the image. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Free and slave. I believe those who are free could be, it could be two meanings free are liberty in Christ and those who are enslaved to the bondage of sin and to um, being enslaved in whatever captivity they're enslaved in but I think there's there's meaning here to ponder free and slave to receive because he causes I would say he forces all all people to receive the mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name or the number of his name this is the allegiance you're giving your allegiance to the dragon to the beast and to the system of the antichrist and so hence you accept the mark you reject God you reject his holy name you reject his tabernacle does that all make sense now the second chapter 14 talks about it some more here's the beautiful lamb I love this I always end up weeping reading this portion so the portion of the lamb and the 144,000 the proclamations are given by an angel let's read this bit here <clears throat> The judgments coming on the harlot 
I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. Look at these, friends. Angels are given the task of preaching the gospel. They're able to communicate with humankind. They've always done it in the past. It's still happening today, yes. And it's going to happen in the near future. To every nation, tribe, tongue and people saying with a loud voice, so it's going to be audibly heard. Fear God. Give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Another angel. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. The great city, because she's made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornications. A third angel. Now the third angel warns against taking the mark of the beast. The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, I mean, he will take the angels of God to come out, be sent forth to give these sobering warnings. It's going to be that convincing, friends, the mark of the beast. So many people are going to say, yeah, why not? Take it. Makes sense. Ticks all the boxes. It would take the angels of the living God to come and warn the people. This is our bad. The climate in the future is going to be economic climate. In the mix, you've got the persecution of the saints and of Israel. The third angel, again with a loud voice. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives the mark on his forehead or on his hand, this is what constitutes you being a part of the agenda of the beast you worship the beast you've accepted the mark you received the image you're damned he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation there's something about the mark friends that tells the world and declares as a testimony that we oppose the living god knowing he's god we hate him we've accepted the counterfeit we as we align ourselves with the dragon with the beast and his minion his puppet there's a good reason why this cup is poured out in full strength the judgments of god are always righteous he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Whose name do we go by? Whose name are you called by? The name of Christ. There's another name that is coming and it's going to be associated to the beast. People will confess that name like they idolize him and it's going to be game over for those who accept the mark. <clears throat> Here's the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Guaranteed. Many will die in the Lord from now on. Because the wrath of the dragon. We know that in chapter 12, read it for yourself. He has great wrath. And he makes war. Goes after the woman and her offspring. The Jews and the Gentiles. He goes after them. So be prepared. Toughen yourselves up, friends. Be willing to lie down and say, to live or die, I will be with the Lord. You can't touch my soul. <clears throat> Fear him who can destroy both spirit, both soul and body and cast it into hell. Yes, says the spirit. Look at that, how precious. Yes, says the spirit. That they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. And if you continue reading on, reaping the earth's harvest, reaping the grapes of wrath, the next reference 
to the mark is in chapter 16. <clears throat> Let's read this bit. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul, a loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. You know when it says a foul and loathsome sore really... I mean, I'm inclined to see that this could be related to something being implanted in the skin. Because the skin, the flesh, receives a judgment. Let's read this again. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome soul came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. We shall see what happens. We're going to know way before it's enforced what this mark is. We're going to be in the know-how. It won't take us by surprise. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea. becomes like blood. Okay. Revelation 19 mentions this. When Babylon is destroyed, all heaven breaks out into song and worship, hallelujahs. And now the Lord Jesus comes. He comes with many crowns on his head. He comes to judge the beast and his armies defeated. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice. Can you imagine the sight of that alone, standing in the sun? How bright would this angel be? And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, of mighty men, of horses, and of all peoples, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies, they're all all these nuclear weapons that they're going to gather, friends, these nations that form the alliance, ultimately they're going to direct their weapons to the king of kings. Isn't this just crazy? Such wickedness is coming. We haven't seen nothing yet. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, their armies gathered together to make war against him. Ultimately, these wicked rulers hate God. They hate the Lord. They hate Jesus. It's so obvious. They hate him. They know he's real. They know he, he exists. All those in these secret clubs, these secret societies, they know he's real. But they have chosen to go with Lucifer. They know it. It's not like they didn't know, friends. They were ignorant. I mean, the angels of the living God are going to be come out, coming out, warning the people. At that point, the people are going to still be ignorant that they don't know there's a God. You see how merciful the Lord is. His mercy endures forever. And people are like, oh, where's God? What's all this bad stuff happening in the world? Bad things happen in the world because there's a devil and there's a wicked thing called human nature, which is a sinful nature. This is why we need the nature of Christ. You have to be born again. You need the Holy Spirit. Then the beast was captured. And with him the false prophet. Who worked signs in his presence. By which he deceived those. Those signs that are coming. That the false prophet does. Will be so convincing. And they're going to achieve the desired effect. Because... They deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive in the lake of fire burning with brimstone and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him as sat on a horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Chapter 20 Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven <clears throat> By the way, what we just read there, I believe, is the destruction of the events of Gog and Magog and his armies in the book of Ezekiel, 
Chapter 38 Done. Dealt with. Armies. Dead. The burial takes place. The weapons are burned. Now the dragon who inspired and possessed the Antichrist and the false prophet because they receive power to do deceiving signs. Those two, the human agents, because it's going to be a man of sin. It's going to be a physical man, the Antichrist. And the false prophet will be literally thrown into the lake of fire and they're dealt with. They're destroyed forever, never to be seen again. However, the entity, Satan, does not get away with it. He's bound for a thousand years. But when he's released, he goes back out to deceive the nations, to find another dude and to become again Gog and Magog. The leader, chief prince ruler of a coalition of nations. It's repeated. I talk about this in great, great detail. Check my playlist section out. We go through the scriptures meticulously in the book of Ezekiel so you can be in the know-how of what's happening when that time comes. That side note was a very long one. Now, I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon. When? After the false prophet and the beast are thrown into the lake of fire, the dragon who was cast out before has now been caught. That serpent of old who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more. It was the dragon that deceived the nations, Gog and Magog, friends. And when the dragon is released, he goes back out to do what? Deceive the nations again. Until the thousand years were finished, but after these things, he must be released for a little while. <clears throat> the saints reign with Christ for a thousand years. And I saw thrones and they that sat on them. Judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image. So it's him being worshipped and this image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And to prove my point, what I was just saying about the Gog and Magog and Satan going back out to do it again. Verse 7. Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. Just like in chapter 12 of Revelation, he's thrown out of heaven, thrown down, and then he goes to make war against the saints. In the same way, Satan is released from his prison this time and will go out to deceive the nations which are on the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. His number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints. So the difference in this and the other view regarding Gog and Magog is the millennium reign. People don't talk about the millennium reign. It's the 1,000 millennium reign of Christ that follows the destruction of the Gog and Magog armies in the book of Revelation, uh, the book of Ezekiel. That's what happens. This is why so many people get confused because they miss that criteria. You can't get lost or confused if you simply read it in its context and follow through the whole chapter. Look how the Lord destroys them. <clears throat> I believe this is the Father finally giving a blow. I believe the first destruction of Gog and Magog is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The second onslaught of Gog and Magog is by the Father. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, which is the Millennium City, the New Jerusalem. Not the, not the New Jerusalem, because that comes after. And fire came down from God out of heaven. 
the father and devoured them the devil who deceived them now the devil right finally was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are they were there from before you see do you see it and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever and the great white judgment white throne judgment friends there you go we've read all the accounts of the mark of the beast and friends it's all pointing to the islamic system including islamic banking finance keep your eyes peeled on these i've got so much more to share i've really got to section my presentations more cohesively because it becomes easier to follow then doesn't it for you my darling friends i'll be back again soon i'm now going to post this video it's friday today the 21st of july and i've got a busy weekend pray for me friends i've got work to do and i've also got to work in this kingdom which the lord gives me strength for i love you please consider being a support to me in my ministry i guess never actually said that before but if you'd like to donate please see the links in the description I really appreciate it uh, uh, tremendously. I appreciate it. I love you. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.